Hey everybody, Christopher here with Bangert, and today I want to talk about invoice routing and configuring it in Sage Paperless Construction. So first off, why would you want to use invoice routing rules? Well, basically it's going to ensure that you've got fast and easy transitions along your approval process, and by using invoice routing within Sage Paperless, whether you're using routing rules or not, you're going to have a clear position in the chain of ownership as you move from entered in paperless to approved and exported into your accounting system. In addition, you probably already have been sold on this since you're here watching this video, but you're not going to have any more lost copies. You're not going to have damaged copies. It's going to be an electronic copy. Somebody gets a notification that they've got to touch it and they can't lose it. It's there and always available to them. So let's talk about, you know, what are you going to need? What do you have to have in order to set up your routing? You're going to need AP Flow, Sage Paperless AP Flow, and you can have that at any subscription level, including AP Flow Basic, which is included with your Sage 300 CRE accounts payable licenses. You do need at least two configured AP Flow users in order to make use of routing. So if you only have a single accounts payable license and you're using AP Flow Basic, then you are kind of stuck with just approving it by the one user. You can't really route it to anyone else. You'll also need a defined process for your invoice receive through approve. So you'll need a defined process for invoice approval. And then you're also going to need at least one active AP Flow queue and at least one user with the AP Flow reviewer permissions. And as long as you've really you've checked all those boxes, then you'll be ready to go ahead and move forward with configuring your routing rules and getting invoices through the system. So one thing we want to talk about before we really dig into the rules and configuration of it is user roles. These are things assigned outside of AP Flow but are useful within AP Flow and within the routing configuration. So let's go ahead and take a look at the configuration of a user role and talk about what it is. So the user roles are defined inside the vault and you would open up your vaults menu, your edit vault to get to your vault properties and then go to the user roles tab. Now a user role is gonna reflect something like an employee role within your organization. Most typically this is going to reflect a particular position, but it could be something more of like a kind of arbitrary role if that makes more sense for your environment. Basically this is something that's going to function akin to an inbox or a cubicle or a desk where you might have the process be, oh, take this invoice, and put it on that desk or put it in that inbox. And then whoever's responsible for that inbox is the person that gets assigned to. So a user role fills that same kind of, of niche within the software. So you might say I've got project manager one, or you might make like a, like a role for president of the company, and that gets assigned to the president user. You can set up some other pieces here, but basically just make sure it's active, make sure you've got a name that makes sense, and then set a user for that. User roles aren't required, but they can be very helpful. It allows you to um, define your rules, define the processes, and then replace the users as things go along. So if you've got a process where you see a lot of turnover, maybe you hire temporary employees, anything like that, it can be really useful to go ahead and set up a role. If, however, you're rarely going to be changing the roles, you know, rarely going to see employees changing, it can be easier just to have the rules assigned directly to users, which is an available option to you. So user roles aren't required, but they're useful. We'll go ahead and save this rule. We'll click OK, and we'll close. And then let's come over to the AP Flow tab to look at the actual configuration of invoice routing rules. So we'll start with the simple process of adding a rule. We're going to open up the Manage AP Flow dialog. And we're going to head over to the 
invoice routing rules. Here we can use the simple add or we can use an advanced editor. The simple add is going to give us an option to create a rule for a single condition. Most of the conditions are based on the header information within an invoice. Some of them are detail, but you don't get to make a decision on which it is by any method other than choosing one of these categories. So job, for instance, is based on the line. Credit card would be based on the header. Various other pieces come from different spots, and you only get these options to choose from. Let's go ahead and make one for a job. So we'll give this a name that makes sense. We'll give this a simple route for 03001. We will go ahead and give it a description, which, whoops, auto fills um, when you leave this field. And then we'll go ahead and set our set our rule here. You do get to give values for multiple things when you set it up. So, you know, you've got a particular job, but you can also, because it's at the line level with a job, you can also get as detailed as the cost code or even the category for the cost code. So if you have, you know, the, the parts manager needs to know that that they need things for uh, materials and the or the warehouse manager needs to know that they need things for materials and the pm needs to know things for everything you might create multiple rules or you might have both of them within this one rule for this we're just going to go pretty simple we're going to say anything for job 03001 needs to go through the project manager assigned to the job and then we're going to send it to specifically SPC administrator, but that's the user we set up as the president as well. You can see we have a sequence to the right-hand side. The invoice is going to go through steps of approval, and those steps are defined by the sequences within the rules that apply to that invoice. So if two users receive the invoice on the same sequence, they receive it at the same time, and they both need to approve it before it can move to the next step. And if they're the last step or the only step in the sequence when both are market approved, then it's been approved and is marked approved in the system. If, however, you assign a different step, let's say it goes to PM1 at step zero and administrator at step one, then it has to be approved by PM1 before it goes to administrator. And once it's approved by the administrator after the project manager, then it's considered approved. So if you can have both approve it at the same time, great. If you need it to be that the project manager looks over it first and then the administrator looks at it, then you would assign a higher sequence to the administrator. Inside the user role, you had the option to set a default sequence. So you could set that the president is always sequence one. You could set that the president is always sequence 10. However many steps you need in your approval process, basically, is the level that you can do here. This can take pretty much any number. And it will just move to the next higher number in steps, regardless of what that number is. So if you always wanted the president role to review it last and you needed it to always go to that, then you would set that at a relatively large number, say 10, 20, 99, however many, and then you would just assign that as a recipient for a route. And that would always make them the last step as long as they're larger than any other sequence in the step. Generally, routing groups aren't going to apply to anybody, so we'll go ahead and just leave this at default. Some, sometimes the routing groups can be useful, but it's not something we're going to cover today. So we can see here we created a simple rule. The process to do so was fairly straightforward, fairly simple. We can see a description of the rule that we created down here as looking at the job value on an invoice, 
and um, saying that it's going to job 0301. Uh, we can see that it's active, and we can see that it's not an exclusive rule. Let's take a look at the advanced rule editor and create another rule here. Okay, so we'll click on advanced. And we're going to give this advanced rule 03001. The description again will autofill. We're going to leave this checked as active. And we're not going to use an exclusive rule in this um, example that we're giving, but I will talk about them here. So an exclusive rule is going to signal to the system that it's the only rule that applies to this invoice as soon as it's triggered. So you can have any number of exclusive rules, and the first one that is triggered during the processing is the only rule that will be applied to that route. So if you had, say, all jobs for 03001 go to Jim or PM1, and then you had an exclusive rule that was all invoices that are for materials go to the warehouse manager, then you could put that warehouse manager as an exclusive rule at the top, and they are always going to receive it. And then if, say, it needed to go to both of them, you would not make the manager one an exclusive rule because you want it to trigger that it goes to the manager, and you want it to trigger that it goes to PM1. So it can assign to each of them and can assign multiple rules unless an exclusive rule triggers that. Generally, that's complex enough that it helps to have someone who's constantly working with these to help you get those set up. Um, and if you have a frequent enough modification to your rules, you can get that process down yourself. But let's say we're going to go for an advanced rule for 03001. We want to add the first rule that is looking for the job. So we get to choose our column and our field type. The field type header is going to refer to anything in the invoice entry screen at that top section. So you can see all of the fields that are available in the top section here. Clearly, we don't have a job number, and we want to get that from the detail. Oop, there we go. And we can see any potential field that could fill in the detail of an invoice here. In our case, we're interested in the job. So we'll go ahead and set that. And we're going to say it needs to be equal to the text value 03001. And when we hit tab, it fills that in. Sorry. 03-001. And you just enter it. I started to type it text, but you do just enter that. And then in this case, we also want it to be specifically that the total on the invoice is larger um, than a specific amount. So let's say we want the, where's our gross or invoice total? Yep, invoice total from the header, so it's the total amount, is greater than, let's say, $10,000. So anything greater than $10,000, we want it to actually go to the PM, president, same as the first rule, but also we want reviewer three and reviewer two to see it, um, or maybe we just want reviewer one and reviewer two to see it in addition. So these are you know, a specific thing where it, it needs extra eyes on it, and the president sees it afterwards in this case. Again, we're not going to touch on routing groups. So we are going to look at how we can add additional pieces to this. So this was an and. We said we want the detail to be a detailed job to be 03001 with a total on the invoice of 10,000 or more. But we also want to look at adding an or here. So maybe we want the job to be this or another job that would give us an alternate here. You can see that we're saying 
this one branches off right here with a comparison between these two. So maybe we want two different jobs on this. Uh, maybe advanced rule 03001 also applies to 03002, but no other job. So we would say the job is equal to this or this. And then it would branch down and be an and. So if it branches over, it's an or. If it branches down, it's an and. And you can also read down in the rule text information about that. So you've got parentheses that group this section together and you've got no parentheses around this. So the parentheses join these two pieces beside the or together to make one true or false statement. So with an or, if this equates to true or this equates to true, so either the left or right side equates to true, then it will calculate a true and that's a true inside this parentheses, which would then be compared with an and to this side of the parenthesis or this side of the and. An and says I want both sides to equate to true. So it's going to look for one side of an or and then both sides of the and. Um, so this will filter down first to a true or a false, and then this will get compared with it against the and. You can also, um, let's get rid of our line here. So we're going to delete this row, which puts us back to only working with job 03001. We can also add a new parent rule that says, again, we want to compare on the detail to the job. This time we say and Let's go to our header, or no, let's leave it at the detail or the go with or the discount is greater than zero. Um, so we'll say our job again is 03, 001. And we'll look at the discount that's greater than zero. So we can set up another one that works like this, which again is just filtering down by looking at the true or falses on either side of the and or or and grouped by parentheses. So in this case, we're going to look at the left and the right of the and in this set of parentheses you can see here. And we'll see does this equate to true and this equate to true? If so, the parentheses equate to true. Then we'll go over to this set of parentheses, do the same thing, and then we'll compare the results of the two set of parentheses via the or. And the way we get an or at the top level there is by adding a new parent rule. So we add a new set of branches here. The way we get parentheses within a child rule here is by setting an alternate. So branching in here and you can create as many alternates as you need. Alternates are always going to have the same column. Let's go ahead and delete these pieces. You could set an alternate here for a different piece of the invoice total but you couldn't change it to be, let's check it, the discount. So if you want to have it follow this, if either or both of these situations is true, then you can do that this way. Let's go ahead and say that's what we want to do, and we'll click OK. So now we have a simple rule for 03001. We have an advanced rule for 03001. Okay, so with our rule, let's go ahead and take a look at, you know, what's that look like? when we go ahead and try to route something. So we'll go ahead and click OK here. And let's go ahead and I'm going to bring over a template here, just a, a sample document I have. It's the only one I currently have on my system. It happens to be in Canadian dollars. We're going to ignore that and pretend it's in US dollars. So we should be able to bring that over. There we go. Now it's starting to work. 
There we go. And we're just going to go ahead and push that to one of our queues. And we're going to say OK, and that's over to our public queue. We're going to ignore pretty much everything on here, but we will go ahead and use the totals out of it. So let's go ahead and open up invoice entry. And we'll make a new invoice off of our invoice. We're just going to find a plumbing vendor here. So we're going to pretend this is Hanson Plumbing. We're going to give this the same invoice number that's on here. So that is five. We'll give it a quick description. We'll set today's date on the invoice instead of whatever's on our sample here. Um, we'll notice that automatically fills in as expected. And we will set our invoice total to $500. And we'll go ahead and make a, a new line here. We're going to say project and expenses is all the same. So we'll put it to a job type line in one. We're going to say job 03001. We want to get up a plumbing cost code here. And we are going to set the gross for the line to $5,500. And we will go ahead and save that. Make sure everything saves out successfully. And then we'll go ahead and route this invoice. And this should pick up our settings. And we can see here that we have the rule went to went into effect. We've got the advanced routing rule for this one. So it picked the reviewer three because we had PM1 selected and reviewer three was assigned to it. And then we told it to assign to reviewers two and three and also secondarily to reviewer one when the discount was applied. So the discount applied greater than zero due to settings on our vendor. Now, let's say we wanted to change what the routing rule was. We would need to remove our routing group. So we click on routing groups. We uncheck default, and that removes our reviewer, and then we can assign a new reviewer and say, oh, just needs to go to reviewer three because our discount was only special, only one special thing, and we don't care about it. And we'll go ahead and assign that to reviewer three, all the lines on it, and then we can route it. A reviewer would go through and receive a notification that they had a invoice to approve and move forward from there. That's pretty much everything I had for today. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, go ahead and make sure to like and subscribe. Check out uh, the rest of our YouTube videos and our Banger user group. Thanks.